At the age of two, my father experienced a traumatic experience. He was left alone with his brother and his sister when his parents died. My aunt and uncle were forced each to take on low paying jobs that often led to working late into the night just to keep their family together, to keep their family alive. Now, my father came from a place in India called Orissa, which is right over here. As you can see, according to the legend, it's one of the most impoverished states in India, even back then and still today. And so, despite this adversity, my father overcame this tough situation through his hard work and dedication to his studies, despite the typical teenage distractions, such as peer pressure or even the ladies. Eventually, my father graduated at the top of his class and got an opportunity to come to America, where now he lives the American dream of success. Now, how did he achieve this state of success? Well, it was through his hard work and dedication to his education. It was because he worked hard even though he had no support system, even though he had no one to uh, fall back on, even though he had no option to go back to. Now, I know my father's story is quite unique, but it's not very dissimilar to other stories throughout history. People such as Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and even Bill Gates have all faced adversity and have all created ways to rise above and achieve success in their lives, whether it was after their death or within their lives. However, in today's society, we see that, especially in the youth, that there's a decline in this dogged determination to achieve success. There's this inherent laziness that we all see in our culture. Now let's take these statistics into example. Currently, the average US household headed by a 25 year old earns less than one of a baby boomer. Now what that means is that the baby boomer's level of productivity in their workforce is much greater than that of our youth workforce. Now, baby boomers are people who were born after World War II in years 1946 to 1964, which renders them an age about 51 to 70 years old today. Now, the fact that these retiring generation earns more than our current youth population raises some major concerns about our productivity levels. Why is this retiring nation earning more than us? It is because of this inherent laziness that our youth culture has experienced and this recent advent of recent advent of lazy culture that has resulted in our like decline in evolution. So let's take a local example into account. School. So many times in school, students tend to procrastinate and leave assignments till later. I know this firsthand because I'm a victim of this procrastination. There have been many times where I've pushed off that chem test, studying for it, to the very last day, or even doing that calculus worksheet the morning of. I've even binged Membean hours at a time just to meet the deadline. So why do we as students keep doing this? Why do we keep procrastinating and putting off these assignments till later? Well, a study by Oregon State was done, and they figured out that there's two main reasons for procrastination. The first one being lack of determination, and the second one being lack of interest. And those two factors are rudely directed to inherent laziness. Now, let's take another example into account. Imagine it is 1 a.m. and you hear your phone vibrating on the nightstand next to you. However, instead of getting up from your bed, you make some awkward maneuver to try to reach for your phone and you get your phone, and you like that Facebook post, or you text your friend back. But now, you need to put it back on the nightstand so that it can charge again. But instead of getting up and putting it on your bed, you make that same awkward maneuver when you're on the corner on the ledge, try to put your phone back, and try to hook it up to the charger. So instead of clearly walking up from your bed, walking over and reaching for your phone, such a simple act, you decide to be lazy and stay in your bed and make all this effort just to get your phone. And why is this necessary? Well, these sort of lazy acts may seem like a comedic scene that I just made up or an inconclusive hindrance. However, these sorts of lazy acts can all build up in your life and start to form habits. Now, according to a study done by the European Journal of Social Psychology, it only takes 66 days to develop a habit. Now, you might be thinking, 66 days, that's a long time. However, they said to get rid of this habit without constructive 
reinforcement, it could last a lifetime. It could take you your entire life just to get rid of this one simple habit. But why do these small habits affect us? I mean, who cares if you turn in an assignment late, right? You'll just get that 70 and you'll be fine with the rest of your grades. Well, these habits start to develop over time, over repetition, and can be really detrimental to yourself. So let's step away from the school setting and think about our life in general. In high school, you have four years. Four years to garner a bunch of skills in which you take on to the college level and eventually into your life. But are we really ready for college? Are we really ready for the rest of our lives? Are we learning the proper skills to be able to implement them in life, real life situations? Well, in an analysis done on an ACT test, only 46% of people were not ready. Now, although 46% is the minority here, that is still a large part of our population. In addition, they also found that 46% of people were not ready to take on the skills they learned in high school and move that on later into adulthood. And think of it this way. Many of you know relatives, pa your parents, and even teachers that have put off assignments to the very end, that have put off their Christmas shopping to the very last day, that have decided that they're gonna do their Thanksgiving shopping the night before on that Wednesday. And so why do we keep doing this? Why does society as a whole just keep pushing off our tasks to the very end? especially now. And so in a solution to solve this problem, I've created three things, three simple rules that you can implement in your daily lives that can help you step away from that laziness. I call them lazy threes. The first one being recording your goals. Now, I know you guys have heard of recording your goals a multitude of times, but there's a reason you've heard that. Recording your goals is important because it takes the goal from your mind and materializes it in front of you which is why it's important when you're recording your goals to write them down physically, or at least type them on your computer. That way, you're taking something that is abstract and putting it on something physical, where the goal almost becomes real. The second lazy three I've created is to get organized. Now, I know many of us are organized in the school setting, but it's important to be organized in all facets of your life, for your extracurricular activities, and even for simple things such as cleaning up your room. By making things organized, you make things easier upon yourself. And when things are easy, you tend not to quit. However, being unorganized leads to things being more complicated and more hard. And when things get hard, humans have the tendency to just give up. And you do not want to give up on your goals, because then you're falling back into that lazy culture that many of us have already fallen into. The third one is to plan your day backwards. And now this may seem odd, but I'll give you a personal example. Suppose it's a Monday night and I want to get home by 9 o'clock. So what I do is I'll plan everything in my day accordingly so that I can get home 9 o'clock, which means I must either reduce time in one event or extend time in another just to meet my requirements. For example, on a Monday, I'll have school in the morning, so I have to wake up at 7.30, get to school by 8, and then conduct all my daily school activities from 8 to about 4. Then from 4 to 5.30, I have some off time. So that's when I allocate time to do some homework, whether it's studying for tests, doing an assignment, doing some MB. And then from 5.30 to 8, I have work on Mondays at Matinee. So I'm going to go over there, work, tutor kids, and then from 8 to 9, I give myself time to come home, since it's pretty far away. Now, since I plan my day like that, I must do more work in a decreased amount of time, which practices increasing my productivity. Let's say between that 4 to 5.30, I must study for chemistry as well as doing a calculus worksheet. That means I must be able to do this calculus worksheet with 100% of my effort so I can finish it in time to study for the test to finish it in that 5.30 span. In implementing these three simple tasks, you can step away from the laziness that most of society has been kind of hovering towards, and you can really create a positive difference in your society. If we don't stop our bad habits, if we don't stop this laziness, Eventually, we're going to create a less productive society. People are just not going to try as hard, and we're going to reduce our advancement. We've created fire. We've created a way to light up a room. And now we've even created stuff like virtual reality, where you can essentially live in another universe. So why must we stop this exponential evolution now? Why must we slow this down with our laziness? Us as youth must take control of our own mindset and must push ourselves to advance the society as a whole. Thank you.